Greetings, mortals. It is I, Raynard the Fox. Now I must ask you something pretty important. Do you believe in ghost stories? Sea of Thieves offers a ton of adventure and opportunities to the player, despite what many think with their constant obsession with sinking every ship at the dock, with only drunk pirates at the tavern none the wiser of cannon fire just outside their door. Such a rich story has grown with the community since release until now. There is a ton of it, with numerous adventures and tall tales released after five years. We can finally have some things to bite into. Just like the Megalodon, I am going to take a big bite out of this lore as I try my best to digest it and turn it into easy to consume knowledge poop. I probably should have chosen a better metaphor, but anyway, I didn't keep up with the lore of Sea of Thieves in the beginning since there wasn't much of it outside of, look, the gold hoarders have gold and the Order of Souls are a little too comfortable decorating with the remains of dead pirates. But now I am a studied pirate that rivals the likes of Suds himself, as I tell you all about the three ships captained by Ramsey Singh, the Pirate Lord himself, and their fates. I start with this because it goes back to the beginning. The very beginning. Well, not the beginning beginning, because that's another video all about the ancients. Anyway. Long ago, when the Pirate Lord was younger, and presumably skinnier, he had dreams and aspirations to be a pirate. But more of the, you know, Hollywood kind, or the glamour, the glory. I'm raising a frothing great tankard of grog when you live to tell the tale. He would dream of a day that he would one day find that paradise, a pirate's paradise. The outside world of Sea of Thieves isn't well known, but I believe it is rife with entire navies sailing under one flag, the Grand Maritime Union's flag. Again, probably another video. Ramsey put together a crew consisting of Sean, Mercia, and Rathbone, and set sail aboard the Magpie's Fortune, with the promise that the horizon would bring them untold adventures, gold, and friendships that would last a lifetime, a place they could be themselves and not worry about the Grand Maritime Union getting in their way, a place where they could sing and dance and be merry and they crashed into an island. Well, the second time that they tried it, Ramsey had his shipwright, Magpie, build him a smaller galleon, one that wouldn't hit islands as much, and they called it the Magpie's Wing. And with that, Ramsey, Shan, Mercia, and Rathbone set sail toward the Shroud, a mysterious and extremely dangerous cloud of red fog that still surrounds the Sea of Thieves to this day. Looming ominously in its intentions, was it there to keep pirates out? Or was it there to keep something inside? Like a giant ocean-sized vault. The scholar and navigator of the magpie's wing describes it perfectly in her entry. She makes many journals that you can find during the Shroudbreaker tall tale. Let me read a portion of that now. Ramsey has been thinking again, and that usually means I'm the one due for a headache. He called me late last night. Mercia! How might we say safe in the devil's shroud? I just stared at him. We all know how dangerous that fog is. It surrounds the Sea of Thieves, but it ebbs and flows. Sometimes it swallows whole islands for months, or even years at a time. Sailing into that mist, and you'll start to choke. The deck beneath your feet will splinter, and the shroud feasts on ships and sailors alike. But Ramsey was determined to explore deeper and deeper with every attempt at voyaging into the Devil's Shroud, until one day, they broke through. They broke through. <laughs> Don't look so surprised. Now they find themselves inside a large cavity within the interior of the Devil's Shroud, full and rife with horrific monsters that would attack them regularly. 
such as a giant beast that turned the sea pitch black with its inky presence, a shark larger than a galleon, and the souls and bones of the dead walking again. They excitedly created a map detailing the safest route through the Devil's Shroud so they could sail back to their favorite pub, which would eventually be named the Unfired Pistol. They would brag about all the booty they got from within what was about to be named the Sea of Thieves. Among them was a skeptic named Stitcher Jim, who doubted they ever sailed into the Red Mist in the first place, and he mocked them. Rathbone, in secret, gave him a copy of the route map that Ramsey had made. Through the shroud, kicking off a massive surge of pirates that would penetrate the fog for themselves and seek the untold treasures of the Sea of Thieves. The most notable of these pirates were Ramsey and the Magpie's Wing, the mysterious Captain and his burning blade, Gideon Greymarrow aboard the Twisted Horn, Briggsy in her sloop, the Homeward Dove, and Captain Eli Slate of the Morning Star. This place was far different from anything on the outside. It was steeped in a magic. The crew of the Magpie's Wing couldn't comprehend at all at first, but they did not rest until they could learn all they could about this wonderful swath of sea that was untouched by ages f from anyone, or so they thought. Soon they would meet not monsters, but a subspecies of humans called merfolk. Well, I looked at it and um, I just knew I was looking into the face of an, uh, another intelligence, another species like us. And they have been dealing with the bullsh** of Sea of Thieves for a very long time. Mercia, the navigator of the Magpie's Wing, was given a treasure at an ancient meeting place. This treasure was a pair of pearl earrings that allowed her to understand the song. You know, the mermaids have a strange language. It seems that they simply communicate by means of music, but it's much more than that. It's the entire oral history of the merfolk themselves. Being able to tap into this song let Mercia usher in a wonderful alliance between pirates and merfolk. This is when they discovered another thief named Captain Douglas. He captured some mermaids in order to sell or eat, I presume. So the magpie's wings set sail to the island in which they hid and launched a full-scale assault. They eventually found victory, entombing Douglas and saving the merfolk within their possession. This made the merfolk glad that, like them, there are good pirates as well as bad. In exchange for the good deed, the crew of the magpie's wing was led to an area in the wilds where an ancient kraken had been chained and left to starve to death by the ancients and the merfolk in time before pirates. With the use of these unbreakable chains that were used to chain the beast, Ramsey hatched a plan. Realizing his whimsical adventure had gotten out of hand, he decided to use the metal from these unbreakable chains to create treasure chests that could not be opened, except for the one who held the keyblade, I mean skeleton keys. You know, I assume he had to cut or break the unbreakable metal to make the chest, but, you know, something something sea magic. And now that is why the mermaids assist us pirates by making it safely back to our ships whenever we happen to go overboard. But beware, it could be something else that visits you in these murky depths. A fierce and enraged creature that drags you down into the dark abyss to turn you into one of its own. A siren or they will turn you into a coral brain sea crawler to act as a member of their army in order to reserve their small numbers. Well, this concludes part one of the Sea of Thieves lore video. Stay tuned for part two. I thought I could keep this video under 10 minutes, but well, we might need two videos for this.